Hi guys, I'm Sam from Website Right, and before I begin, I just want to say if you are appreciating these videos, please do give me a thumbs up and also subscribe as well, because it gives me the motivation to carry on and do more helpful WordPress tips and general tips. Now, this video is actually Joomla related. It's still kind of related to WordPress because the website that I will be building for the client will be in WordPress, but basically, They've got a Joomla website at the moment and it's hosted elsewhere. And they've asked me to rebuild their website and also host it too. I said, absolutely no problem at all. Now, what I usually do is I will take a copy of their existing website, make sure it works on my server, and then I'll host it from there. And then in the background, I can create a subdomain like new dot website name dot com and build the new website there they can see it when they're happy with it i'll flip it over to the new site not a problem at all but of course when you do move that website over to your server you need to make sure that it all works correctly because you don't want to change the dns to point to your server and then it's not working you need to test it beforehand so this video is specifically looking at max but the basis is pretty much the same on windows but on your system there will be what's called a hosts file and within that you can specify the IP address of where the website will be served from i.e. your server and at the website address and then just double check to see if it's working you can see the site as it would be served click from page to page etc and make sure all is good now fingers crossed it will all work straight away but that will depend on you making the correct edits in the relevant files so in wordpress you've got a wp-config.php file in there you would of course need to make sure that all of the host names the database etc are correct but in joomla there are a couple of files it's configuration.php so you've got to actually go through there, make sure all the file names are correct, the file paths, the MySQL host name, username, password, all that kind of stuff is set correctly. Um, and if it is, great, it should, should work okay, but it's worth testing. So th this video is gonna basically take you through that scenario and show you what to do. Fingers crossed, it'll go okay. So with this example, we're using a website called gwinternational.com. Now at the moment, this is hosted elsewhere, but what I've done, I've liaised with the current web developers. I've got some access to their cPanel server and I've managed to grab the files that I need and the database. So as you can see over here, this is my hosting panel. If I go into file manager, I've uploaded all of the files that I need in the public HTML folder, which is great. And also I've created the database as well in PHP MyAdmin. Uh, now, one of the things I've been careful to do is obviously need to change the configuration file for this particular website and make sure it uses the, cr the actual credentials that are correct for the software. So I've had to change the MySQL host username, the database name, and all the file paths to make sure they are correct with my server. But what I need to do, of course, is before I make any switches to the name servers to switch to, to my server, I need to ideally check that all works okay. So you'll be able to see whether you're on cPanel or StackCP, whatever you use, your website will be on an IP address. So for me, it's over here on the left-hand side. If you're using cPanel, you'll find it in the stats section and you'll have the IP address. And I need to now test, of course, to see whether the website works successfully. Uh, as you can see here at the moment, if I go to gwinternational.com, this is being served from the live IP address. But what I'm gonna do is on a Mac, I'm going to change the IP address that this website connects to. So what we need to do is go into your finder menu and go to go and then we need to click go to folder and then we need to go into forward slash etc forward slash hosts. It looks like this. So click the go button and what it's going to do, it will highlight that file and we need to just double click to open it. Now as soon as you start to actually edit this file, you'll find that it will ask you to create a duplicate. So we can go ahead with that and we're gonna paste in the IP address. And we're going to then type in the website address name. 
But what we're going to do, just to be doubly sure on the next line, we're going to do the same thing, but also put in www as well. OK, so that's all done. So we can go to file and then save. But one thing we need to do is actually take away the copy that the Mac will always do. So we're just going to save it as hosts. And also we're going to untick that box there that says if no extension is provided, use text. So untick that and then click save. OK, so that has all been done for you. So we can close that file now. And then what we're going to do, we'll open up another finder window here. I'm going to go to the desktop and you'll see that we've got our hosts file that we've saved. And that's the host file on the system. So if we drag one on top of the other from the desktop into the etc folder and it'll ask you to authenticate now. So let's click authenticate. And then we'll click replace. And you'll need to enter your Mac administrator password in order to replace this file. Click OK. And that's great. That's all been done. Now, what we can do is we can open up a command prompt in the Mac and just check which IP address it, it's actually now going to be accessing if you type in GW International. So we're going to go for ping GWInternational.com. And sure enough, it's using my IP address there, which is 185.151.30.139. So this means that if I was to then refresh this website in a perfect world, everything would work. And actually it has done, which I'm, which I'm really pleased about because quite often you can transfer a website and you may have uh, not put in the correct database host name or the username and password. So everything is working all good. Now, what I can do is just confirm that that's the case by going into the file manager and I'm just going to rename the PHP file. I'm going to just call it .bak, which is a backup file. And then let's just refresh this here. Yeah, OK, it now no longer works. So brilliant. Um, that indicates that all has gone across smoothly. So what you can do is now browse the website and if I just refresh there and then we can go through the different pages. Ah, look, now we've we've encountered an error here. Uh, so one of the pages is not working. So that indicates that the HT access file that I need is probably not on the server. And yeah, we can see that there's uh, oh, there's an HT access dot text. But um, we need to make that a dot ht access. So uh, let's do that now. Rename. Call it dot ht access. Click OK. And then let's see if this page now works. Yeah, perfect. OK, so we should be able to go through the different pages. Make sure all the images appear uh, and all the pages are working. But if you're then happy with the way it looks and displays, then the, yeah, that indicates that all is good and you will be ready to switch your website. So yeah, really pleased with that. That one worked relatively well. But if it has stopped working, you'll need to go through your file manager and update the configuration.php file. But that is effectively how to do it.